Boom! We got the basketball hoop at skate park once again. Been well, a little while. Have we brought one to the skate park before? We've brought one to the Incline Club a long time ago, mm -hmm. and we've brought one to a box jump in the driveway. The box jump was a very long time. time ago. Yeah. And uh, we did some sick stuff. <laughs> yeah, because we end up doing like BMX versions of it, but yeah. it just turns into a trick shot. Just chaos. We're pretty much turning into so. Dude Perfect after a little bit. So. <laughs> yeah, we are Dude Perfect. Dirt. <laughs> well, let's go get straight into it. <laughs> oh my goodness! All those cookies were inside that cup. You should have seen Will for the first time ever coming to a skate park. He walks up the ramp acting like he was just anti-gravity man, just could make it straight up. No, I went to go pull my foot up. Are they done? Are they salvageable no, or what? No, they're You're done? You do owe me a cookie. Yeah, you so. can do oh, Gabe's not scared. We brought the power tools, even though they told us we couldn't. No power tools. You know what I forgot? I have to brush my teeth. That is not your toothbrush. And Matt doesn't know how to use them. I do. <laughs> this, this wood is this nice wood, though. Yeah, it is nice wood. It's really tough. We got a good spot, good. though. We're ready That's to ready. go. Oh, it's our first trick shot of the day. <laughs> first BMX trick shot of the day. Yeah, that was easy. Good job, guys. The one-handed ollie oop. That was close. Actually close. Yeah. Yeah. Finally. Right, we are doing the chain pass right now to Faso, to Nick. To Will, to Brandon, to Gabe, to Maddie, and <laughs> nice. Oh, <laughs> that was sleeve. I heard the swoosh and I was like, what? I gotta say it, it, it was just oh net. It was God. just net. That was really you good. Like, you like, He's on oh, the ground again. So <laughs> Tony! Tony's here! Tony! He's here! <laughs> I had no idea. Tony! <laughs> no! God! Tony's down! He's down. And Tony's not coming He's back down. to the skate park. Oh my God, He's down. Already, five seconds in. Forget it. Tony is back. Where did he come from? What the heck? No. Nobody made nowhere. a noise until he got over here. Tony's here. Yes! Oh, it's about five, needed. six weeks since Tony's yeah. been here. Did you nice. just hit a different elbow? Yeah. Freaking right elbow, oh damn. Just, <laughs> don't well, good to see you, Tony. It's good to see you guys. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go! Nice. First try! Tony. Here we go. Can we get this trick shot? Ball, Tony. Line shot. Yes! That was sick. Good job, Let's Tony. Go. That was nice, man. First try. Okay. <laughs> Add though after this. Oh, get it, Fausto. Get it, Fausto. Last shot. Go, Ready? Go. Get the ball. Get the ball. Get the ball. Go run Let's all the way on top of that Let's ramp. Go. On top of that ramp. On top of that ramp. Hustle. Over there. On top of that ramp. On top of that ramp. Come on. Focus. Yeah! yeah! Nice shot, dude. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> All right, so we are wrapping up the basketball trick shot video. It was a lot of fun, but it took so much time and so much energy. All the guys are pretty beat right now. But what we're gonna do now is transition the video to Maddie's nightmare bike packing trip. We've been talking this video up and it's crazy what Maddie went through. I am just glad that he survived. Literally, I'm just glad he survived because he called me up in the middle of the morning when I was in California for the X Games. I saw a call coming through. I answered the phone and he had like a little bit of service and he asked me for advice. He was wondering if he should head out of there or not and I told him straight away I was like dude listen what you're telling me just happened I'm glad that you survived I think the safe thing to do is to get in your car and to head out of there it's crazy it's an absolute crazy story and it's just typical Maddie putting himself into these wild situations so what we're gonna do now is go check in with Maddie before we get into it are you still recovering from your uh, big journey <laughs> is it more mentally or physically mentally <laughs> Physically, I didn't do that much. <laughs> you still did a good amount, just not as much as you're supposed to. <laughs> not as much as you're supposed to. Yeah, you're right. Oh my god, mentally, absolutely. <laughs> well, I'm excited for everybody to see the video right now. This is going to be great. <laughs> if you guys remember in the last video, I told you all about how I'm going on a 300 mile bike packing trip and it's going to be my first one ever. In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how that trip went and how that bike packing trip became an absolute nightmare. I had to deal with bears and I had to deal with a gang of dogs. So let me explain it all to you guys right now. 
like I said, this is a 300 mile bike packing trip called the Kahuta Cat. And I found this on bikepacking.com and it's something I really wanted to do. So I drove 10 and a half hours to Georgia up into the Blue Ridge Mountains and stayed at the Mulberry Gap bike getaway. What's up guys? I made it to the Mulberry Gap um, bike campground and um, it's like nine o'clock right now and for some reason it's still kind of light out, uh, but I need to get to bed. So my goal is to get to bed as fast as I can. Uh, I have the giant air mattress set up behind me. It's like pretty much the whole entire size of uh, the back of my car. And I have to crack the windows. So I unzipped my hammock bug net and I'm gonna somehow drape that over me so I don't get eaten alive. And um, tomorrow starts possibly the greatest and most difficult adventure that I could ever take on. I don't know, just excited to start it and just see where the day takes me, see where the next two days take me. But uh, either way, I'll try and bring you guys along for the ride. All right, Good morning everyone. I uh, just wanted to let you know I slept pretty dang well. Um, I sweat for a really long time and woke up in like a freaking puddle of sweat. Then I had to go to the bathroom, so I put on some clothes real quick, um, but uh, I felt like just in case there was a bear attack that maybe my t-shirt and my sweatpants would have helped. So um, I did that and then I went to bed and I even woke up a little chilly. So it worked out really well. Um, but 6 a.m. I did everything I had to do and uh, it's showtime. About to get on my bike. You can't see it really, but uh, it's all packed up and ready to go. Uh, this, the light is just about breaking through. So. I'm just gonna get this thing going and uh, I'll update you guys as soon as I can. This is just to get out of the campground. Jeez. Literally didn't even get anywhere yet. <laughs> oh my goodness. Very peaceful though. It's nice to be in the mountains. Good change of scenery. Oh my God, so nervous right now. So this is where the adventure really began for me. When they told me to beware of bears and other wild animals, I did not think that I would come this close to being in contact with these animals. I saw four black bears on my trail within one mile of starting this 300 mile ride. I didn't get anywhere yet and on the trail I have no direction to go but into two black bears up on a hill or two black bears beneath me. Two bears ended up going down the hill, which I was very happy about, but then I saw more movement up top and one sprinted and jumped onto a tree, gapped about five feet onto the tree and scaled it about 10 feet. The next bear came running down to go see his buddy who's on the tree and that's where I just sat there filming from across the ravine because I finally got to a safe spot and I don't know whether you're supposed to run from these animals stay quiet, stay still. I have no idea. I did limited research on this because I didn't think it was actually going to happen. I tried my best to keep quiet. I didn't want to get their attention. I saw two leave and one even looked at me from down on the ground, which was super weird. It's like he still knew I was there, even though I really didn't make all too much noise. But I sat in one spot and then eventually the two bears who were up top ended up walking down. They all went on their merry way and I went on my merry way as well but I'll be honest it wasn't that merry because I did not feel good about this anymore I literally I can't make this up I'm already like mentally shaken I finally get on the trail four bears four black bears on the trail like I just had no idea what to do and Dude, I'm like so shaken up right now. I like just crept back quietly. I didn't want to film with the GoPro, but I have a, I have it all on film. Oh my God, I'm like shaking. I'm not, I'm one mile in. Dang it, this is gonna be a long trip. Oh crap. I even watched one climb a tree. I've never seen a bear, let alone climb a tree. And now it's got me like looking up and stuff. I'm like freaked out right now. Crazy. 
okay, we push on. So I got off of the trail with the bears and I was hoping that things were gonna start to get a little bit easier, but unfortunately they did not. To be honest, I'm not very far in, maybe like an hour and a half or so. And this thing, uh, this course has not went down. I am not kidding, it's just been up. <laughs> um, very hard, but uh, I'm really hoping that we get to the top of this mountain and it gets just ripped down. It's been going like three miles per hour, so <laughs> this is tough, very, very tough. The most important piece to this whole entire ride was my new Garmin GPS system that I just got, and this is actually my first ride with this system. I needed this device to get me another 288 miles through Georgia and Tennessee but I'm up in the mountains, I have zero service, I have zero Wi-Fi connection, and I haven't had it for hours before that. I couldn't even make a cell phone call if I wanted to. So if something just happened with one of those bears, I can't even tell anybody about it. I would have just been left out there. So I started following the GPS and it told me to climb this mountain. So that's exactly what I did. I climbed about a mile up this mountain and once I finally got to the top, the GPS told me to do a U-turn and go back down that mile. So I turned around and I descended one mile back to where I got on the road. I was lost. I have no idea what's going on with my computer. Nothing is connecting. And then finally it rerouted and told me to go down to the bottom of that. So I really thought I was on track. So I descended three miles down to the bottom of the mountain where I first started. So as things started to finally look up, as I'm cruising about 35 miles per hour down the side of this mountain, a dog pops out of nowhere and is running the side of the road with me. It was a German Shepherd. It was terrifying. And it's like these dogs follow me wherever I go. I literally cannot get a break. A German Shepherd just chased me. What the heck is going on right now? I'm only like an hour and a half in or so and like I'm just pretty pissed off. Um, I'm really mad at the computer. I don't know if it's computer's fault or just the GPS's fault. I have no idea but I'm like, uh, I don't know, just pretty angry. Uh, this has definitely been an adventure so far and I'm just not happy with I guess the way it's going. Um, I don't really know what to do. But of course, this isn't the end of the story and things aren't gonna get any better from here. This is me picking up the GoPro once I dropped it in this super grassy field <coughs> and I cursed as loud as I possibly can, but this, this was the cool. easiest of things that happened. Back right, right back into the trail. I just got my feet soaking wet from a water crossing. That took me out. Um, it was rocky and slippery and both feet came off. Bummer, should have had my waterproof socks on but obviously I did not prepare, so. Ay -ay -ay. Very difficult, everything is very difficult. I'm just gonna try and keep my composure, just roll on. There's been a lot of these and I don't mind walking through it because those are really slippery and I almost got taken out the first time. So I'd rather just let it be. I've had nothing but issues so far. I'm finally on track, but then now my bag, I think it's too heavy. So it's scraping the wheel. So I'm trying to rearrange it and literally in front of me, like right there, a group of five dogs just walked up and stared at me and ran into the woods. Two black like German Shepherds, one like poodle. I don't know whose dogs these are, but that was the strangest thing in the world. Like they all just walked up, stared at me and walked right into the woods. I have no idea what's going on. I know I said like, I don't know whose dogs these are and that's just me thinking that somebody must own these dogs, but I realized that this is probably just some sort of feral pack of dogs that's out in the wild right now. But it was just weird to me that these dogs were all either solid black or solid white colored. And there was basically five different types of dogs, like two big German shepherds, one tall white dog, one little like poodle fluffy looking thing, and one like kind of mid-sized dog. So I was hoping somebody was going to yell up the mountain and say like, hey, 
guys, come back. And nobody did. We stared at each other for about 15 seconds. And these dogs just randomly at the exact same time, turn left and run down the side of the mountain. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Mm. What's up everyone? Um, I finally made it to a real place. <laughs> uh, this is Fort Mountain State Park or something like that. And on my list, on my list, Fort Mountain State Park is 12 miles in. And I've done 23 miles, which means that the rest of those miles have all been in the wrong direction. Um, I have been riding for three hours and 38 minutes and I'm only 12 miles in. So after everything has happened, I've kind of made the decision that it's kind of like a bad omen. And I think I'm going to call this one <sighs> to close. <laughs> Um, I don't want to consider giving up because like I've really really tried but like I think sometimes you got to know when it's just not working out um, which stinks I've really had I mean I've still had a great time riding my bike for 3 hours and 30 minutes but I still have to ride all the way back which I don't know if I could take a road or I have to get right back onto a trail um, so the adventure has been something else, you know, um, but just with the dogs, the bears, and um, I didn't mention this, but like the whole side of the trails have been lined with poison ivy, and I'm like very allergic to poison ivy, um, more than the average folk, and I am almost 1000% certain that I have poison ivy everywhere on me. So I will need to go to the doctor and go get a shot and go get a cream because I am going to swell up. So instead of continuing on and being out here for what could possibly be like another two or three days, I think I'm gonna head back. Um, I've just now been able to call Scott and my mom and my girlfriend because I've had zero service since I got to the Mulberry Gap camp. There is zero service there and there is no Wi-Fi. So I've had no way to contact anyone. So I finally just got to this park and I've had one bar of service. My calls keep um, going in and out, but I was able to tell them that I'm gonna head back and that I'll update them in the next four hours when I get back. So it's been quite the journey and um, I'm not going to say I'm upset, like I'm not, I'm not mad at myself or anything, you know. I think I prepped really well for this and I am proud of even going through with it this much. But there is just certain times where like you really just, you got to know when it's just not working out. And um, basically just everything I've kind of done so far since I've been started riding uh, just has not worked out. And I think I'm just hitting my point where I'm like, you know what? Let's save for another day, you know? Hopefully, eventually, I'll have somebody else to ride with. And I think that'll change everything for me. Um, but being the only person pretty much I've seen, I've seen, I just saw that car pull up. And other than that, I've seen maybe like, I don't know, three cars total, four cars total. Um, on the road that I was going the wrong way on. And, uh, yeah, it's just, I've had so much going on and I haven't been able to tell anybody or like explain it to, and it's just hard. It is really hard. So I'm not going to take this as a failure. I'm going to take this as more of a, um, I guess just a valuable lesson that this is really difficult. And if I had to recommend anything to anybody, um, I would tell you right now that if you're planning on doing any type of bike packing, do it with somebody else. <laughs> do it with a partner because um, there's a lot that can happen. And being by yourself and especially in a place where there is zero service, I'm three and a half hours away from where I started and I've had zero service since yesterday night 
Um, so I can't talk to anyone. I can't complain to anybody. I can't, you know, in case of emergency, I have nothing. And it's obviously screwing with my GPS, which is also kind of scaring me a lot because I don't want to get even farther out and then really be like lost or in the wrong direction or like turn this into a five day trip, you know? Um, so maybe I'll try this again when there's an event or something where multiple people are doing it because I would feel a lot better. But today, just not my day for it. And uh, I'm sorry if anyone's disappointed, but just know your boy did try his best and still gonna look into the next adventure. So that's it for this one. I hope you guys learned something from my nightmare adventure because trust me, I learned a lot. And I'm gonna be taking all that information onto my next adventure and I'm gonna bring you guys along for the ride. So look forward for the next one to come and hopefully... Uh...